Six on Good Morning El Paso. Students in the Socorro District breaking in their new pencils and notebooks today, but a lucky few will get to break in a brand new school. Plus, new this morning, El Paso County Commissioners approved negotiations for inmate health services, which include more services for mental health. You have to be honest, you have to be trustworthy, uh, you have to be generous, caring. Uh, discrimination is none of those things. And the Boy Scouts decide to accept openly gay leaders. We have reaction to the change this morning. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. A very good morning to El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. It's a great start to the day out there. Yes. Gorgeous, nice and cool for a minute. Yes, it's it gets hot. Mark. Yeah, and then those kids are getting back to school this morning. Mm -hmm. Hopefully everyone is awake and getting their breakfast and their clothes ready <laughs> because it's going to be a hot one. Yep, got those first day jitters. How's it going to be for them today, Crystal? Well, at least the weather is going to be okay for them. They don't have to worry about getting rained on and the new outfit they might be heading to school in because right now it's looking like there's only some scattered showers surrounding El Paso, Las Cruces. Here's the look. Your clouds and radar map showing us that right near the boot hill of New Mexico tracking to the north, meaning Silver City, Lordsburg in the line of fire here, they're going to see some light to moderate rain. So first day of school potential out there a little wet. We're also looking at some rain that's along the east sides of the Sacramento Mountains and some light rain that's down south of the international border. I don't think this is actually going to last long enough to affect us much in El Paso other than maybe a few drops on the windshield this morning. Right now we're at 79 in El Paso, so it's a pretty pleasant start out there this morning. Winds are at 7 miles per hour. Las Cruces 74 degrees and our relative humidity pretty healthy, 59%. Of course, we need to maintain that value as we move into the afternoon and this number is all relative to how hot we get. We are looking like it will be another toasty afternoon. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about a still very warm day with more rain showers possible by tonight. Good news is slightly cooler with a frontal system moving our way. We'll talk about when the temperatures start dropping in a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Crystal. This morning, it is back to class for the Socorro Independent School District. The year begins with the grand opening of a brand new elementary school, too. A very nice one at that. Purple Heart Elementary is located at 14,400 GR Camposano Drive. That's in the far east part of the county and where we find Good Morning El Paso's Denise Olivas, who's checking out that new school. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Hillary. You know, class is set to begin in a little less than two hours here at Purple Heart Elementary. It has a capacity of 800 students, and this yard will soon be filled with students and their parents dropping, off, dropping them off here at Purple Heart for the very first time. Well, Purple Heart is SISD's 47th school and will house kinder through fifth grade. Over the weekend, the school held its official opening and ribbon cutting ceremony, but today is the official start of class for Purple Heart Elementary school. With us today we have Lucia Borrego, the assistant superintendent for SISD who oversees the district's elementary schools. Thank you so much for waking up. It's usually an early start for you, but this was an extra early start and an exciting one at that, right? It was. We're so excited. You know, uh, even for us as adults, the first day of school, you can't sleep. Uh, we're very excited to have the kiddos come back. Uh, it's a great day. We, um, we're conquerors here. We're ready to hit the ground running this morning and welcome all of our little babies. And, uh, you know, this school is known, it's, it's starting almost a new concept of learning for kids. Tell us about that, uh, a collaborative and more group-based learning. Absolutely. What we're learning now with research is absolutely kids are learning at a completely different way. Um, times have changed. Uh, kids are not sitting down and just listening to the teacher talk. They want to collaborate. They want to work in teams. And we know as we're getting our kids ready for college and career, we know that we have to teach them to learn how to work in teams, to work as a team. So we're really excited to be able to do this and start very early on um, with kindergarten and th so the kids know that they each have to participate as a team member, as part of a team, in order to be successful in life. And lastly, just a moment ago, I mentioned, you know, this is a, the school holds 800 students. 
Are you at capacity already seeing how fast the east part of El Paso is growing? You know, it's crazy how fast it grows. One day to the next, we, um, we're getting close to capacity. We're not at capacity, but every day we're constantly registering students. We're adding teachers. We're trying to find good teachers to come in um, because uh, it's just the kids are coming all the time. And uh, so what we want to do, we want to be conservative and make sure that um, we don't overbuild in the district. So we want to make sure that we're using all of our schools to their capacity. And so we're trying to be very strategic in the way that we do those things. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll be talking to you in our next half hour. We'll be learning more about the name, of course, Purple Heart Elementary and the significance, especially here in El Paso and even making an impact across the U.S. For now, we're live in Far East El Paso. Denise Olivas, ABC7. All right, Denise, thank you. And new this morning, the county now has the commissioner's court's approval to begin negotiations for better mental health services for inmates. The county plans to negotiate with the University of Texas Medical Branch for medical services and with the Emergence Health Network for mental health services. Mental health considerations are being added as part of an evaluation to be provided at a new pretrial office, which is opening this fall. Right now, inmates receive medical and dental aid from Corizon Health, but only limited mental health services. The five men convicted in the disappearances and murders of 11 women in Juarez learned their punishment. Each of them sentenced to life in prison. Officials say the men kidnapped the girls, forced them into prostitution, and then killed them when they no longer had use for them. The women's bodies were found in 2012. You are about to play a role in how El Paso's city government operates. We now know what items you'll be voting on in November's city charter election. City Council made the decision at Monday's meeting, and the big items involve city reps themselves. They get a $10,000 a year pay hike, putting city reps at $39,000 annually, and the mayor at $55,000. The mayor says he does not support the raises because many city employees have not gotten a raise in years. El Paso voters will also be asked to decide if city reps can have other public sector jobs while serving on council. You'll also be asked to decide if the city attorney should report to the entire council or just the mayor. And if the city should be allowed to cancel one council meeting every month. City Council also approved a proposed tax rate at Monday's meeting. The 2016 tax exemption for disabled and senior residents is set to take effect. That means a tax decrease for a third of El Paso's property owners. And the rest will pay higher taxes to make up the difference. So the average homeowner would pay about $42 more, bringing your annual city taxes to about $911. $911. But again, you'll pay less if you qualify for the senior or disabled exemptions. City Council is hosting public hearings throughout August, so nothing is set in stone yet. The Boy Scouts of America is now allowing openly gay adults to serve as leaders, but the group's executive board decided that there still will be an exemption for church-sponsored scout units with religious objections. ABC's Bazi Kanani has the very latest on this story that's still developing. After 105 years of scouting, one of the nation's most popular youth organizations takes another step on the trail toward inclusion. The Boy Scouts now permitting openly gay leaders. For far too long, this issue has divided and distracted us. Now it's time to unite behind our shared belief and the extraordinary power of scouting to be a force for good. The group's president said the ban on gay adult leaders was not sustainable and would lead to more costly lawsuits, a decision hailed by gay rights advocates, including many within the organization. Previously, the, the ban being lifted for youth members um, was contradictory because it indicated that it was only okay until you were 18. You're taught to be honest, you're taught to be trustworthy, uh, you're taught to be generous, caring. Um, discrimination is none of those things. But the policy change threatens to further fracture the organization, despite a promise by the executive board that there would still be an exception for church-sponsored scout units with religious objections. The denominations that charter nearly half of all units are threatening to split off. In a statement, the Mormon church said it was deeply troubled by the decision and the admission of openly gay leaders is inconsistent with the doctrines of the church. Despite the objections from churches, the Boy Scouts president, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates, said enforcing the ban on gay leaders would definitely be the end of the Scouts as a national movement. Bazi Kanani, ABC News, Washington.
And still to come on Good Morning El Paso today. It's a pain when your phone or internet doesn't work, but imagine being without these services at a fire station. We'll have the details. Plus, a litter of puppies saved by the Humane Society will tell you how you can help save even more furry friends coming up. And at 610, meteorologist Crystal Cly has a preview of your detailed forecast, Crystal. And I got some amazing viewer photos from last night. We're going to take a look at some of them right after your break. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.